Greetings, intermediate algebra students. Welcome to chapter three, section five, where we're going to talk about linear inequalities in two variables and systems of linear inequalities. You'll recognize the inequalities because they have this, well, this inequality symbol in them. And when it comes to graphing solutions to these inequalities, we're gonna be on the x, y coordinate plane. And this is sort of a two stage process. One stage of the process involves graphing a line and the other stage involves doing some shading. And then when we move into systems of, any, systems of linear inequalities, I'm gonna layer that aspect right on top of what we talk about first. And essentially what we're doing is we're graphing two inequalities on the same coordinate plane. And then we'll look and see where the shaded regions overlap and either only the overlapping region will be our final answer to the question, or we will combine all of the shaded regions and that larger shaded region will be our final answer to the question. So let's get in and have a look and see what are we really dealing with. I'm gonna jump directly to number five and we'll We'll work our way up to the system of inequalities by working with a system, which sounds strange. It'll make more sense in a couple of minutes. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm looking at two inequalities. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And I'm going to rewrite the first one up here. It says 2x plus y is less than or equal to 4. And I'm going to solve this, make it look more like a y equals mx plus b kind of a statement. So I'll subtract 2x from both sides so that y is now less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. Now that I've got this inequality in a format that I'm a little bit more comfortable with and more familiar with, I'm going to graph it as though it's a line. Forget about the fact that it's an inequality for a moment. Just pretend it's an equation and that it says y equals, and let's see what this line looks like. It has a y-intercept of positive four. One, two, three, four. It has a slope of negative two. So I'm gonna rise negative two. So I'm gonna come down two, and then I'm gonna run positive one. So negative two over positive one. My first point, my y-intercept was here. And then I'm gonna rise two by coming down two. I'm gonna run one, which will put me here. And then I might go ahead and rise another negative two and run another one, and that'll put me here. That way I'm clicking on points that are a little bit farther apart it's gonna increase my accuracy when I'm graphing this line in online homework software. So always better to have your points a bit farther away from each other if possible. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line through these points. And in this specific case, for this specific inequality, I'm gonna draw a solid line. Sometimes we draw a dashed line. And if you'll look at the inequality with me, it says y is less than or equal to. Because of the or equal to part, that's what's telling me to draw a solid line. If it had been a strict inequality, in fact, well, if it had been a strict inequality, I was thinking about changing it, but we'll, the next one that we do, we'll do with the strict inequality. But if it had been a strict inequality, we would draw our line as a dashed line. So we'll do that next. But for the moment, it's still or equal to, and let's draw our line. So that's phase one of graphing a solution to a linear inequality, is we have to get the line part of it and we have to make sure that it's either solid or dashed, whichever one is appropriate for the inequality. Maybe thinking about this or equal to symbol as its own solid line can be a reminder that you're supposed to be drawing your line as a solid line. 
Phase two of this process involves some shading, as I mentioned, and we're either going to shade below the line or above the line. And some of you might be familiar with some techniques for how to decide where to shade, but I'm gonna show you one that when we start working with parabolas or even circles, you'll be able to use this technique in all circumstances in order to decide where to shade. And the technique involves using a test point that's not on the line. If I can use zero, zero, if the origin is not on the line, I like to use zero, zero. Recommend zero, zero. So let's try it. I'm gonna plug in a zero for my Y value is less than or equal to negative two times a zero for my X value plus four. And then we'll clean that up a little bit we see that zero is supposedly less than or equal to positive four. Now that's a true statement. Zero is less than or equal to four. True. So shade the region that includes the test point. In this case, our test point is below the line. So I'm gonna shade the region that's below my line. If this test point had tested false, I would be shading above the line because my test point is below the line, but it tested false, so I will shade the other side. True, so shade region including the test point. Thankfully, you can hear me saying these things and my handwriting doesn't have to be great. And if you can't read what I'm writing, remember there are subtitles available. You can switch over and read those if you can't read what I'm writing. I am just being a little bit scribbly tonight. <clears throat> okay, so we tested zero, zero. It was true. So we're shading the region that includes zero, zero. And that is the region below our line. So I'm going to fairly lightly or loosely just put in some shading in here. There we go. And I'm doing that because, and in fact, I might even, if I were doing this with a pencil, I would be doing it so lightly. I'd be holding the back of my pencil and just sort of, sort of like a magic wand, just very gently brushing this against the paper because I don't want it to come in too dark. In fact, I'm gonna change the opacity on my pen so I can do this a little bit lighter because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna work with another inequality and we're gonna graph it right on top of this one. So I don't want this shading to be too dark. And let's see what our next inequality is. Now, if this question had just been a request to graph the solution to this one inequality, then our answer would be this graph. And the part of this graph that's really our answer is the line and the shading because any point in this shaded region that we just colored in any point pick any point in there take its x and y coordinates and plug them into the original inequality and they will test true it'll turn it into a true statement all of those points in that shaded region are solutions so we've shaded all of the solutions. All right, let me get rid of this box and those dots. Shading has to stay, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna grab inequality number two, and we're gonna incorporate that into this conversation. I'm gonna switch colors. So here's inequality number two, says that x minus one is, I'm gonna write this as strictly greater than zero even though it says or equal to over here. I'm gonna go with strictly greater than just so that we can see the difference between the graphs when we have a strict inequality versus 
a less than or equal to. I'm going to solve this inequality for x. So I will add one to both sides so that I get x is greater than one. And then I'm going to graph. <clears throat> I'm gonna graph this as though it's a line, but I'm going to graph this as a dashed line because this is a strict inequality. Graph as dashed line. See, it looks like lime, it's terrible. I'm just being too loosey-goosey. Graph as dashed line because greater than is a strict inequality. And what does that line look like? Remember that if it's an x equals line, then it's gonna be a vertical line. We're graphing the collection of all of the points that have an x coordinate of one. So let's go into our graph. All the points that have x coordinates of one are like here and here and here, here and here. Okay, so there's the vertical line that I was looking for. Let's get it in there and let's have it be dashed, please. Dashed line. Very nice. And now we have to talk about shading. All right, when it comes to shading, we're gonna use a test point that's not on the line. I'm still gonna recommend zero, zero. And when we do that test, the only value that I need from that ordered pair is, uh, well, the numbers are the same, but I only need the x coordinate because my inequality only has an x in it. So let's do the test. Zero is greater than one. I don't know about you, but that sounds false to me. It's false, so shade the region that does not include the test point. You need to shade the other side of the line. Now in our graph, the origin, 0, 0, is to the left of our green dashed line, but since that point tested false, we're going to shade the right-hand side of the green dashed line. And when you do that shading, if your shading looks anything like mine, maybe make those uh, sort of pencil strokes go in a slightly different direction. So I'm going to try to angle them a bit. Oops, but let's make it, let's lower the opacity there. And we need to get everything to the right of that green dashed line right up to it. All right, there we go. This is a masterpiece. If we look back at the question one more time, now that we've done the graphing of our solid and dashed lines, and we've done shading for both of them, very carefully I might add, the last aspect of this question that we need to look at is this word right here and it says and. And you're gonna to wanna to include this in your notes. Because it says and, our final answer for the question is going to be where those shaded regions overlap and only where those shaded regions overlap. So for this question, you could go in with yet another color or just go back in with the greens and the blues and sort of darken this shaded region a bit Maybe come in with the blues again. Now for the purposes of, of your notes, you could redraw this graph and only shade this kind of wedge that's in here 
including this triangular part up here. Okay, you want to shade all of that. Because if you're going to choose a correct cho uh, option from a set of multiple choice options, the correct multiple choice option will only have that sort of bottom central wedge shaded. It's not going to have some light shading and some dark shading. Only that bottom wedge is going to be shaded for a correct answer. Or instead of redrawing this graph, write down an explanation of what I just said. Since the original compound inequality has the word and in it, the answer will be that uh, doubly shaded region and only that doubly shaded region. Now then, something else that can go in your notes right after that would be a note that says, if the question had used the word or instead of the word and, then our answer would be all of the shaded regions. So the correct multiple choice graph would have all of this shaded and all of this shaded and all of this shaded. The only thing that wouldn't be shaded would be this upper middle wedge up here. So the word or is like the union symbol where we pour all of those potential right answers into the same carton. I'm like, I'm pouring, but my hands were off the screen. It's a terrible illustration. Anyway, the word union means join all of those shaded regions together. So or and union means join them all together. And is like intersection where we're only interested in what they have in common. In other words, where they overlap. If it's a single inequality, then you're only going to have one line, either solid or dashed, and then you'll shade on one side of that line or the other. If you have two, then you're going to have two lines. Maybe both of them are solid, maybe both of them are dashed, maybe it's one of each, like the one that we just worked on. And if you have two inequalities connected by AND, you're going to shade where the shaded regions overlap. And if they're connected by or, your final answer will be all of those shaded regions included together on one graph. There are some uh, applied like word problems that can arise uh, regarding uh, linear inequalities in two variables. They're not as common or as easily constructed as um, when you're working with other topics. But do be aware that they're out there, but hopefully this gives you a good start on working with linear inequalities and systems of linear equalities in two variables. In our next section, we're going to be talking about systems of equations in three variables. So take a couple of deep breaths before you click on that link that's right down. Mm, where how do, It should be right there, right? Yep. Click on that one and we'll talk about systems in three variables. See you there.